All right. Hey, everybody. What's going on? This is Solar Gray, the Cinematic Sorcerer. And yeah, we were doing the thing. And then all of a sudden it was like, hey, guess what? Your stream thing. It, we don't have the right address because yeah, we're a computer and we only do what we are told. And I'm like, did I tell it to do the right thing? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. But yeah, well, guess what? We're here. We're in. And as I said, um, yeah, got the ponytail doing the proper thing. So I don't look all ragamuffin like. And um, how you guys doing? As I said, I am Solar Gray, the cinematic sorcerer. And um, ooh, look at that. I got a nice little title card and all that stuff, but it doesn't say me. <laughs> yeah, it is, it is a weird day. There we are. I am Solar Gray, the cinematic sorcerer. And of course, um, this is Table Talk. And I am here with my good friend, D.W. McCann? Yeah, your uh, camera's right over there. There's a camera around here somewhere. Yeah, yeah. Where would it be? Yeah, yep, 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 yep. It is <clears throat> now. If you guys are wondering, today is a weird day. Weird, weird, weird day. Um, you know, we got D.W. McCann down here at the Wizard's Tower, and he brought the boyo. So <laughs> there is a baby in the Wizard's Tower, and there hasn't been one of those here for a long, long time. <laughs> you know. And I got to say, man, you know, I met the boyo outside and I, I will definitely say um, you don't need a DNA test because <laughs> you really don't. That is <laughs> that is your kid. Like, you know, it's funny because I remember when you met my kid mm -hmm. and um, this was God, you know, um, 19, 19, 19 and a half years ago. Um, and my daughter was very much me. I mean, it was, you know, um, where I come from, there's a lot of people that are like, I don't know if that baby's mine. And honestly, there there are things with that. But um, quite honestly, I never had that doubt. And I'm letting you know right now, when it comes to Theodore, when it comes to little Theodore McCann, I don't have that doubt. You like introduce me and okay, so here's the thing. All right, here is here is the scenario. He comes into the wizard's tower. He's like, Hi, yeah, yeah, and he's carrying the basket. You know, he's got a basket of offspring sitting up. And um, sure enough, he puts the basket on the sofa and I see a big headed child just like like Thanos, like a little Thanos, just just napping. Right. And sure enough, I'm like, oh, hello, Theodore. And as soon as I said that, the kid doesn't miss a beat, still asleep, just hmm. <laughs> 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 And I'm yeah, like, yep, my kid. yep, that's yep, my you kid. are most de And the reason that I'm saying that this is most definitely your kid, now, that is, I'm not going to lie, your wife is just as sarcastic. Oh, yeah. So it could, but you smirk out of the left, she smirks out of the right. So she was so, so your kid was very much going, yep, I'm here with dad. Where I, I'm pretty sure if I go to your house and you're, and, you know, um, Miss Tina says something, you know, and the kid smirks out of that, it'll be out the opposite side of his face. <laughs> Depending. He smirks based on who he's with? Yeah, that's what I'm guessing. That's what I'm guessing. But the fact that it was like, hello, Theodore. Like, you damn right. <laughs> you know, yeah, that's, that's my, my boy. That's my boy. Yeah. So before we pushed um, start today, we were actually, um, we were actually talking about something. Uh, we started talking about Michael Jackson's Thriller, and um, he was saying that the the song had been Anglicanized because one of the most important things in the song of Thriller is um, during Vincent Price's monologue he's like you know um, that whole terror falls across the land the creeping hour is close at hand you know um, I'm not a voice fight actor to stay alive yeah come a little closer to the mic though uh, just a little sure. there you go yeah that, that's about it I want to make sure that everything is um, uh, working properly but yeah and one of the things that he says, and this is like the thing, it was like we're doing this for Michael Jackson, Michael Jackson's doing this for like his people, the urban people. And it was the first time that Vincent Price publicly used urban dialect. Because it was like, you know, something, something, something good to terrorize y'all's neighborhoods. And it was like, did he just say y'all? I, I, I want to say he said your. But um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to... Um, um, well, this all comes. Up. This all comes from the fact that I was uh, recently doing, uh, trying to do a voice match of Vincent Price, 
and I ended voice up voice actors call them voice matches. We call them impressions. <laughs> Well, the impression would because uh, impressionists also get the character in their face and everything. And I, if it's voice actor, all you need to do is get the match on the voice. Okay. Um, but the idea was, uh, as I was as I was working on it, I rewrote the lyric to be about how difficult it is to voice match Vincent Price and how not just anybody can do it. Um, and uh, I posted it on my Instagram, and I was talking about it, and he mentioned the the y'all part, and. When I pulled the lyrics, I don't remember it saying y'all. I remember it saying your. So it's interesting if it's if it's y'all's in the uh, recording that somebody has Anglicanized it in the uh, in the um, uh, translation of it, or the the uh, dictation of it. The well, you know, wording Illuminati. Okay. Well, now let's 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 take a look here. That's gonna. Darkness falls across the land. There it is. There it is. Right there. Right there. Yeah, yeah. To terrorize y'alls. Not your. To terrorize your neighborhood. No, Vincent. Um, we're talking to the South and we're talking to Detroit. Oh, fantastic. To terrorize y'alls neighborhood. I'm sorry, I can't get any more Negro than that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but yeah, I gotta say, man, that that was yeah, and it was, you know, it was one of those things that was um, it, it was one of those things that was like revolutionary. It was I could pull up a thing, um, to talk about like the song itself. There's a great video about the Thriller album and specifically that song. But um, honestly. Why would anybody tune into our channel to watch the channels that we like? I well, true, but I also it's a topic that I, I thought you were going to say that it didn't fit with our topics, and I'm like, actually, I think that that it is seeped well into the culture, oh, the geek culture, that particular bit, which is again, you, this the whole conversation actually began with a conversation about the dance from Thriller versus the dance from Beat It. Yeah, see, I was asking like if, Thriller was yeah. groundbreaking, has seeped into so much, but Beat It hasn't had that same, I mean, it's fantastic. It's yeah. it's was a, a wonderful uh, hit for Michael Jackson, but it hasn't done the crossovers as much as Thriller has. Well, it's true because it's not based around a neighborhood or anything, or on a, well, on a holiday yeah, rather. Well, it's not it, based on a holiday. But um, I was just, you know, just amusing, just amusing. Like, you know, I see Thriller flash mobs, and I was going through, you know, that wretched hive of scum and villainy that is Facebook, <laughs> and I saw a video of like a bunch of full body cosplayers that look like Power Ranger villains doing the Thriller dance at a con, and I'm like. You know, I'm seeing all these thriller flash mobs. Why not he beat it once? You know, I want to see him do that. Hey, but you can see that every theater you go see West Side Story at. Yeah, like you're already getting <laughs> that experience. I mean, we did it. We did it for uh, the first year they brought back the Halloween event at Universal Studios. Okay, I was there, and they the first set you went into was a whole bunch of undead movie people. So there was. Like there were, each section had only about six people to it, and the first one you came across had an undead director, an undead actress, an undead grip, an undead, you know, they had a, a film set, and they actually had a, cra a camera on a crane as part of their area. But since it was the first one you experienced, as the gates opened, we would all go to the front gate and interact with everybody. So you have all of the people haunting Halloween Horror Nights mm -hmm. at the front gate, and we're waiting for the gates to open, and we all started joking around, and we ended up lining up and doing the thriller dance for everybody who was about to come in. See, I honestly think it would have been more awesome had you started doing the beat it thing. You know, had like the zombie grip um, get a hold of like the vampire lady and start doing the knife fight thing with your hands tied together. You know, but that's just me. I don't know. I'm not that. It would have been great, but yeah. it doesn't have the same connection to the people who were there for horror <laughs> as thriller does it's true it's true but you know i'm really not that funny i'm really not i try i, I was actually writing some stand-up the other day because um my little hobbit has gotten into watching downton abbey and okay. i've learned a lot about british culture hmm. specifically um that the poor british need a lot of um well 
they need a lot of reassurance and the rich British are cowards. That That's just like the aristocracy are cowards. Because every time you're sitting up and you talk to somebody from Liverpool, they're like, oh no, we're going for lunch, aren't we? Yeah, look at that. That's a thing over there, isn't it? Isn't it? Isn't it? Aren't you? Isn't it? Aren't you? Every, every single paragraph ends with asking if they said what they said or if you are what you are. It's like, yeah, look at that. I'm not going to say over there, isn't it? Isn't it? Yeah, yeah. That, that, the tire's flat over there, isn't it? Isn't it? You're gonna need a toe, aren't you? Aren't you? Yeah. Going out for lunch, ain't you? You know? But the aristocracy, right? They are afraid of everything. Everything. They're like, oh, I couldn't go over there, I'm afraid. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. It's raining outside, I'm afraid. Oh, yes, yes. No, the door's open, I'm afraid. Oh, I'm, I'm afraid the silverware needs polishing. I, <laughs> yes, I, I can't eat from that, I'm afraid. I, I, I do enjoy that. I, I, I really do en enjoy speaking with you, I'm afraid. I, I, I'm afraid that I can't continue to speak with you because I enjoy it so much. I'm uh, afraid that I'm afraid. Yeah, I, I'm afraid that I've just been arranging matches. And the matches are arranged, I'm afraid. You know? <laughs> and I'm just kind of going, all right, that's fine. Um, and you know what? I don't care if you guys don't like my jokes. Somebody thinks I'm funny. <laughs> yeah, I mean, seriously. Ah, sound and all that stuff. But yeah, I mean... Seriously, it's I, I just have these word observations, and again, I like the idea. I, I really do like the idea of doing um doing more beaded flash mobs. Just because, well, I'm not gonna say I like the song as much. I just want to see the dance a little more. <laughs> you know, that's the thing. I'd rather see if they can do a flash mob mm -hmm. of uh, black or white, and just have a whole bunch of people. We manage can't do to that much CGI. <laughs> In Grand Central Station, everybody live morphing. Have you noticed that we started with a good Michael Jackson song and we're just going further and further down in quality? <laughs> 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 exactly, exactly. So, all right, but we got a lot of stuff to talk about. But mm -hmm. first, I want to thank you for showing up here today um, because I know, I know how far away from this tower you live. That's a long drive. And, um, it's made so, interesting with the rain. <laughs> yeah, you know, I got up this morning. Um, I got up this morning, and I'm like, my alarm went off at its normal time, and I pushed snooze, not knowing how tired I was. And then I got up again, and I'm like, uh, you know how you get up in the morning, or you wake up, and if you're anything like me, the first thing you do is you look at the window. Look at the window to see how high up in the sky the sun actually is. So you can be like, well, it only looks like 7.30, so I still have a few more minutes. You We've know? done ourselves a favor of our windows are covered. Well, yeah, and, so, and you have a baby Because there are times I've had now. to sleep during the day. Yeah, exactly. I mean, before before even the baby, there were times that I'd work all night when I was doing a lot of the haunt stuff. True. I, I, my shift would begin at 8 p.m., and I'd work clear to 3 a.m., or back when I used to work at... Um, for Disney grad nights, uh, those you left the, the premises at six a.m. to go home. Yeah, yeah. So and that, there were a that lot of times is definitely I slept a thing. During the day, and uh, so I like the bedroom dark. And <laughs> so we have uh, blackout curtains on the thing. Gotcha. So they, and they very rarely Got, get like open. aluminum foil on the thing. There like is on one of them because uh, they, even the blackout curtains, the sun hits a spot during the day and just shines right into the room through the, you know, like you can tell in the blackout curtain. Mm -hmm. So yeah, there's aluminum foil in that spot. Yeah. And in truth, like, you know, I, I use the sun cause I, I got a big tree outside the bedroom window and I'm like, okay, judging by the sunlight, it is, I have about another 10 minutes to sleep. If I felt like sleeping, I believe I will use that 10 minutes. But I looked up and I'm like, okay, man, it's, it's, wait a second. My alarm was set for an hour ago. If it's, I wonder if the rain is coming. Then I looked at the clock and I'm like, 1030. Jeez, oh. <laughs> and so I walked outside and I'm like, it is eerily dark. Like it, it's one of those, a storm cloud was literally like, oh, I felt like Charlie Brown, just a storm cloud over my house. And I'm just a little black rain cloud <laughs> hovering under the honey tree. Yeah, exactly. And, um, and my neighbor came out, and I'm like, oh, hi, breathtaking blonde. Is it just me, or is it, like, eerily dark out there? And she's like, oh, yeah, it's supposed to rain today. And I'm like, okay, sure. I get back up to the stairs to get to this part of the tower, and then thunder and rain, like a, like a lightning bolt literally pierced the cloud and just went... Pfft. 
you know. <laughs> and I'm just like, oh, okay, it, it's one of those things. So yeah, it's storming outside. Well, the so. nice part was is it poured the whole drive here to the point where there were points I wouldn't go faster than like 40 miles an hour on the freeway. <laughs> Because it, you couldn't see through the windshield if you sped up. Yeah. You have to go the speed where you can still see out the windshield. Yeah. And uh, as soon as I pulled up here, it started to lighten up. Got light enough that I was able to get the boy out. And, and now it sounds like it's gone right back to it. <laughs> yes. 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 That's a little bit of stuff. You know, I'm, I'm doing experiments with sound things uh -huh. because um, there's a certain amount of of sound clips that you can use mm -hmm. on all of these videos before you get flagged or silenced or all that stuff. So I'm kind of going, eh, 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 eh. And I'm guessing three seconds, uh, three seconds, three seconds each. But, you know, I'm glad you were able to make it through the rain, sleet, hail, and storm. But on the upside, storms like this, great for new parents, really great. Because as soon as that, as soon as the temperature drops and you start getting that rhythmic pattern of, of rain, outside the thing it puts kids straight to sleep <laughs> well, it'd be nice if he sleeps through the night we're still not there yet but um he uh he had slept through the night two times in a row back at like one month old and we're like oh man it's gonna be easy mm -hmm. he has not slept through the night since <laughs> so we're hoping eventually eventually i know it hits different kids at different uh, ages yeah and um i'm getting some weird error code right error now code on what? error on um oh there we go yeah that's better okay isn't that fun yeah and uh, no error code averted but I do I do want to say hello to you you guys out there watching that got the that got all of the what's the term I'm looking for all the social media contacts blah, 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 blah. um I want to say hey to you guys now if I seem a little run down it's only because I'm exhaustion hungover you know it's no alcohol no drugs no no none of that stuff just lots and lots of coffee but i could go back to sleep right now i'm not gonna lie and i'm trying not to be too boisterous because there's a sleeping baby in the tower and i don't know how loud i can yell well, remember <laughs> he sleeps through i mean when he first came home my uh recording studio was still next door to the bedroom he was sleeping in ah and so he went to sleep several times to me making uh, cry out some <laughs> attack and death threats and yelled at the top of my lungs. Like, so he, he uh, has kind of got a chill vibe about him from like, oh, dad's yelling again. All right. As long as his first war or cry or first words are cry havoc and let slip the dogs of war, I'll know he's your son. But and see them driven before <laughs> you. <laughs> but I do want to say hello. To the deck mob at MP City. How you guys doing out there? Woo, deck mob. Boop, boop, boop. Boop, 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 boop. Um, but yeah, it it is it is most definitely a thing. Now, um, we have <clears throat> we're I'm trying to keep it light right now, primarily because we have a serious serious thing to talk about today, and um, you know, so I'm trying to have fun while there is the time to have the fun um because yeah today's thing it is a very serious topic like all right not as serious as like hate crimes or, or suicides or anything like that but it is a thing that keeps our community very small and i talk about it a lot in big picture but today we're going to get into a little bit of um of What's the term I'm looking for? We're gonna get into details. Uh, nuance. Nuance. Yeah, some of the some of the details and the nuances and all of those things. But if you guys want to join the conversation, you can always hit the chat. Or if you were so inclined, you can totally hit us up at back in the deck at gmail.com. That's B A C K I N T H E D E C K at gmail.com. Um Start a conversation in our YouTube channel. Just use um use the YouTube comment section because it's always civilized and polite and well thought out and not emotional, nor is it very insulting. Um, follow us over on Twitter. Um, we've still got that question. We, we're I'm working out the proper wording for the um for the poll that we're putting up. 
Now, SoundCloud, that is going to be a thing. We've got a couple of things on SoundCloud, but I still need to hear from you guys about whether or not I should re-up the account or look for another platform for the audio that I want to give to the people that can't afford to be our patrons and, you know, afford to pay that stuff. So I need to hear from you guys. Also, you can always follow us on Instagram so you can see when we're doing shows, what's coming up, what subjects we're going to be doing. Also... If you really like, um, you got Deckers on the book, huh? Oh yeah, Deckers on the book, huh? Now yeah, you can totally go to Deckers on the book, which is the Facebook group that we got, and we do a lot of stuff on Deckers on the book. Specifically, um, you guys get to talk to each other. You guys get to see what um, what everybody's building, what games they're playing. Now, if you want to help us out in a very direct form, then head on over to our GoFundMe, um, where you can give donations and all that stuff, um, and that helps us keep the lights on and, and keep our equipment running and stuff like that, and if you really want to help us, you know, especially with the stuff that we have been doing, um, with the stuff that we've been doing with the boys club and, um, the community centers and things like that, then head on down to Back on the Decks Patreon. That's patreon.com slash bid underscore p. We've only got five patrons right now, but that is where all of our archives go up. And of course, we've got tiers to set up. And of course, we got people saying, hey, you know what? If if they go, you know, certain, certain tiers. Now, our tiers start at as little as a dollar. So... You know, a dollar a month, and that really helps us. You know, um, I think last week I had to replace one of the mics in here, um, which is why I'm still working out the sound and all that stuff. But um, it's a real thing. It's it's a real thing. And the when we get up to three, four hundred patrons, we can do this full time, and I won't have to go out slaying dragons and emptying warehouses and stuff. And I can start putting together better shows for you guys with more battle reports and more live games and all that jazz. So with that, I am going to say, you know, one more time, you can totally hit us up at all of these things, you know, back in the deck at gmail.com, hit our YouTube, hit our Twitter, join Deckers on the book and talk to us directly because unfortunately that wretched hive of scum and villainy that's run by a dude so evil Aaron Sorkin had to write a movie about him is always in my pocket. So we are always, 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 always available and I'm spending a lot more time on Twitter. So with that, I got to say, um, today's topic, today's topic. Now, I'm not going to lie. Um, yesterday, I was leaving the house to go take care of my mom. Okay, leaving the house. I had just locked up the tower. I was literally pushing play on my Pandora because I, I, I listen to Pandora when I'm riding my motorcycle. So I push play on my Pandora. And as I was pushing play with the headphones in and the helmet on and the goggles going, and it was like, oh, my God, he, he's okay. So he asked what the topic is. I don't have my notes on me today. I, you know, that's why it took me so long to get back back at you because I was literally like the keys were in the bike. <laughs> it's all good. You know, I, w- I will put forward that unlike uh, what seems to be the common feeling about uh, communication on phones and stuff, I am not in demand for immediate response. Oh, I thank can't God. always give an immediate response. So if somebody takes a day or two to get back to me, I'm understanding um, I, it, it, I, I miss my pager. Yeah, no. <laughs> um, I miss my pager. Way back Get in off my, my day, lawn. <laughs> back in my day, we had a pager. And I could just send some numeric code to let them know that I got their message and I agree. <laughs> well, in the same way, like it also gave the ability to say how important it is that you get back to me. You yeah. were able to, like, I, we used the, the 911 code or 411 or 211 or 811. Oh, yeah. Based on how yeah. urgent is it. And I told all my friends, if you ten, if you page me with a 911, recognize that I will get in car accidents to get off the freeway <laughs> to and to call you back as soon as I could get to a phone. Which means if it is 911 and there ain't no blood, we gonna have words. Yep. <laughs> Absolutely. That was, that was you know, misuse of the code. Yeah. But now it's, you know, somebody sends you a message on Facebook and you get harassed if you haven't responded within a day. And it's like, I, I haven't been on Facebook. 
I was working on today, or I was doing this today, or you know, Facebook well, is not always an everyday thing for me. And I'm not. I don't lie. have Facebook Messenger on my phone. Yeah, you are the only person I know that doesn't have Facebook Messenger on his phone. I'm not gonna. You know, don't like, like it. Yeah, don't, don't like, like it. it. Not at all. <laughs> Get off my lawn. <laughs> <laughs> but um, today, today's thing is, um, it's a real thing. Now we talk about why we're here a lot. Okay, mm-hmm. we talk about like we're here for the people of color, the women, the P- the you know, um, LGBT, um, oh, L- LGBTQ. I don't know the rest of the letters put in order, but I also can't recite King Lear, which is English words put in order. But you, you guys know we're 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 there, and um, you know the disabled and the poor. Being a poor person of color, hey, I'm intersectional. Um, you know, there are certain things that I've experienced that a lot of my co-hosts have only mildly experienced. In the to the point where they can write it off as an odd happening. It's like you know those things are just that group of people. And one of the things I, I want to talk about is how the franchised, the the people who are franchised, when you are the status quo, you don't recognize the people that aren't status quo and what they go through. Because there's there's a lot of that happening right now where the people are going, whoa, hey, hey, um. That's normal for you. Like for you, one person, uh, or you have one bad interaction out of every 15. But for me, I have one good interaction out of every 11, you know? And so you have a 14 to one good. I have a one to 10, um, I have a one to 10 good, you know? And that's the case for a lot of people, but you know, we can talk about the fact that this exists all day. What I want to do in in today's show is actually talk about the hows. Like, what are the particulars? Um, and, <clears throat> of course, we're going to start off by talking about gatekeeping. Okay, a whole lot of subtle gatekeeping because it happens on different levels to different demographics. And I want to start, since we are the get off my lawn crew... A lot of the type of gatekeeping that happens from, I guess you can say, advanced or way more experienced gamers to the new guys. You know, um, last Sunday I had a wonderful experience teaching a few people how to play, um, helping to teach a few people how to play Fat Pathfinder and how to play role playing games. Now, one person had come over, um, they had played D&D about 20 years ago. And they played like two sessions and then they went into the the video game RPGs like um, he specifically went to never rest. I mean, EverQuest <laughs> and um, Ever crack. Is what I remember it called. Yeah. Yeah. And um, and he was asking a lot of questions and I'm like, I, I, I help teach people how to do tabletop RPG from the video game stance that I had to explain to him. One, you're a person living a life and two. You know all the stuff that you're supposed to do online with people in between raids if they weren't monsters? <laughs> and he's like, "What? Well, whatever do you mean? I'm like, conversations, um, planning stuff, like going on small adventures, you know, things like that with, well, with strangers. <laughs> they have a little bit of that within those types of uh, MMOs of the flavor text mm-hmm. on the quests. Yes. But a lot of people just click, 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 okay, I'm supposed to go get wolf teeth. <laughs> Whereas some people will read why this guy is asking for wolf teeth. And, oh, yeah. And know the whole backstory of, oh, he's talking about a, a knoll in the area. I bet you I know which knoll it is. And it becomes a more rich story for those people that right. want a story. Yeah. But that people who just want to go out and kill wolves until they get enough teeth, which I still don't understand why you have to kill 15 wolves to get 12 wolf teeth. That is less than a Bang. wolf, a tooth. Like, I mean, well, a tooth, a wolf. Like, well, you have to get a specific one of but their... But still, then you should, there were still three that apparently don't have that tooth. Well, you might not actually pull it out properly, or you might crack it. You know, I mean, it, I, I can justify all that. I, I will tell you that my backstory for my character is dentistry, so he is clearly <laughs> able to remove these teeth functionally and correctly. I just say bring the whole head and let them pull the teeth. <laughs> but um, that that's just... I don't me. know which one you wanted, but here. Yeah, exactly. Have the head. I, I brought in the whole mandible, dude. I just, uh, I just It's in there. Heck, I didn't know if the, t- if the tooth is in his foot, so here's the whole wolf. Yeah, 
But in the same time, I am also that dude that when the girlfriend says, could you bring me that thing out of my purse? I'm like, no, here's your purse. <laughs> you know, it a bad incident of reaching into a woman's purse and getting bit by a ferret. Um, the story is longer than that. But um, he was asking a lot of questions at the table. Like, mm -hmm. can he, can he, is it allowed? Can he, can he? And I'm like, yeah, again, you're a person living a life and you get the chance to do all that. And I'm just walking him through everything. And he's like, well, I feel bad for asking so many questions. And I paused and I looked at the table and I'm like, quick question or quick thing. Raise your hand if you are or were a teacher at some point in your life. And six hands went up of eight players six, six hands went up and I'm like this is what gaming is supposed to be this is it now I was gaming with the intersectional tabletop group um, which is one of the Facebook groups I'm in run mm -hmm. by one of actually run by the dude that you're replacing on this show that was Captain Steve <laughs> um, and yeah it was it was great but then that got me realizing a lot of the stuff that now we were playing Pathfinder and I was noticing I, I'm looking at and I'm researching the divide between Pathfinder and Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition. <laughs> you know, because there seems like a lot of Pathfinder players are like, no, no, it's too simplified. I do, no, I don't, it's new and it's different and I don't like things that are different. Uh, I don't understand that I like both. Yeah. I've had fun games in both. But you 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 know the types. Of, I mean, I'm I sure do, you've seen. I do, them. but I mean, I, I've known that from every game that you can play. There's always somebody who's like, I hate that game. There are a couple of games I'm that way about. There are a couple <laughs> of games I will never play because I've looked at it and gone, that is. Uh, I was never uh, big. I've gotten more about it since, but I was never big on a lot of the miniature stuff mm -hmm. because there were so many rules. Mm -hmm. Or uh, most of the mech games. Okay. A lot of the mech games, the RPGs, it was roll to see if your gun fires. Roll to see if it hits. <laughs> Roll to see where you hit. Roll to see whether the armor was damaged. Roll to see whether any game, uh, like electronic yeah. function. There were 18 rolls for each shot. Yeah. And that, that's and not as entertaining for me. But some people love that. See, I, I'm I'm like, I'm like a C across the board. I really am. Because I don't really love any one aspect of gaming. I like it all. But I have people that, like I said, it's it's you know I look at I looked at Fred the edition and it's different from what I spent all those times learning and blah, 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 blah. and I'm like okay, but what I have noticed is that fifth edition did exactly what it set out to do, and that was refresh the pool of new Dungeons and Dragons players, because the people that went Pathfinder. They did it because of 4th edition, and 4th yeah. edition was a great big misstep. Well, actually, um, I'm going to disagree, and as I will preface, mm -hmm. I hated 4th edition. Okay. However, I recognize it for what it was, an attempt to reach out to people who've only ever played MMOs. I get that. And, and it brought some people into d and I would say... That may have never tried it without that bridge. Well, I would say it did that, but the misstep was doing it with their flagship property. So you okay. would you would have recommended them creating a secondary game yes. that used all of that. Absolutely. I think I would have put forward I think they just should have made a class or two that functioned that way. So that mm -hmm. that person can play with other people who want to play and you're still within the same world and that person gets to hit one, hit one, hit one, hit one, <laughs> then hit two, then hit one, then hit one, then hit one, then hit three, then five, and then hit one, then hit one, like, which is what four was. Fourth yeah. edition was that. Yeah, and... But it would allow the people who want to be more inventive to still be inventive alongside somebody who just wants to button mash. Well, you know, I, I would be with you on the character class thing, but 3.5 needed cleaning up. Absolutely, and absolutely. So I can see why they did that, but uh, again, it shouldn't have been the flagship property of Wizards of the Coast. It should have been another role-playing game. Um, I don't necessarily... I, I don't think 3.5 was broken enough that it couldn't function. I still play a couple of 3.5 games. Well, that's where Pathfinder came in. Yes. And I'm noticing a lot of the Pathfinder players took a look at 4th edition, and they said, that is absolutely not what I want to do. But then they take a look at 5th edition, and I see, I, I get the feeling, I get the feeling that um, they don't want to do 5th edition because they're still holding on 
to that resentment from fourth. And then they're like, well, it's too simple. It's too this. I've talked to three people that have given me um, a game mechanics reason that they don't like fifth edition. And I'm like, well, doesn't that mean you just prefer Pathfinder instead of hate? Like, it sounds like you have a preference for one instead of one is one is good or thing thing that I know good thing that I talk about must be bad. It's like this zero something. I, I want to bring up one thing just just to mm-hmm. remind you that we live in a world where if your first smartphone was an Apple then everything Android is evil. And if your first smartphone was Android, everything Apple was evil. And see, that's where we get into that gatekeeping, Mm -hmm. you know, because um, being the wizard that I am, I always ask why and I look at the nuances. And there are a lot of games out there that are different from Pathfinder and a lot of stuff that we used to play for one major reason. It's not that they're not complicated Mm -hmm. because RPGs are complicated if you want to follow the rules of the game. If the rules of the game are important and that's the most important thing, there are a lot of rules. It it doesn't matter what game you're playing. There's a lot of rules and they're all important. However, the learning curve is what makes or breaks a community. And Pathfinder has a very steep learning curve. Very steep. And um, Dungeons and Dragons Fifth Edition, Vampire the Masquerade, um, most Steve Jackson games, other than GURPS, have a very, have a very shallow. <laughs> like curve. the Fantasy Flight uh, was middle ground. Yeah, Fantasy Flight was the solid middle ground between mm-hmm. the two. Um, but yeah. there's, there's complicated stuff you can go into oh yeah and then there's really basic if you just want to play this style and just let it run its course just do it yeah yeah um and there are some people that are like you know i like games that are this flavor and everything else is terrible it's all apple and i'm just kind of going do you guys see how you're gatekeeping right now you guys are saying the thing that you've spent the past 15 years becoming amazing at is what you prefer but when you bring in new people they're already nervous they don't know what's going on so i used to call it because back in my days of working at a game store i worked with a lot of tournament players in the sense of everything had to be efficient and you don't play a game unless you're looking to crush your opponent well, yeah, I had a similar feeling when I started out with Magic the Gathering. I played mm-hmm. against three people who were tournament players, and the game needs to end in two turns. If it goes to a third turn, then I've my deck is not working properly. Yeah. And I really enjoy the eighth turn bringing out of Leviathan or yeah. something like that. You know, that's, that, that was more fun for me. Well, one of my thing was I had a hard time learning tactics because I would just get beat down until I learned how to not get beat down anymore. And I'm like, all I'm asking you to do is to show me how, what you're doing. Like, walk me through the steps. Well, if you can't figure it out, you shouldn't play. And I'm like, okay, way to close off the gate. And um, one of the things I've noticed, remember when we were at um, Comic-Con this year, and I asked that question, how do you address players that are afraid of getting things wrong and I was coming at it from the standpoint of a lot of new players need to be less nervous but the more and more I thought about it since since August there's a second layer to that which is a lot more players need to realize how they're not being welcoming and they need to be more welcoming you know it's 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 on the shoulders of those who are playing in the game and hosting the game to keep the door open to the new players a little bit wider you know but what i see a lot is well i worked this hard why shouldn't they have to and my answer is because you're awesome and when you were working that hard you didn't like it all the time right (laughs) so why not be awesome and pull that guy up that's behind you like you carved the handholds into the into the cliff you know and you did that 
Now, are you going to help the person behind you climb, or are you going to fill them in and make them have to have to cl make their own? But this is this is like we've talked about this before with uh, the concept of it being a collaborative story and a, yeah. a game that where everybody is somewhat responsible for making it and keeping it enjoyable for everybody involved. Um, if you are only in it to so that your character can be awesome, and if somebody else is trying to learn how to do something, well, that taking time, that's taking time from my character beating the snot out of this thing. I don't want to sit and listen to you try and figure out how to use your dagger, which is only going to do two <laughs> points of damage anyways, so I don't even care about your attack. I'm going to kill it in the next round, so would you please just hit it with your... But if you take a breath and be like, I want to see what this guy wants to do with his and encourage him, and then be like, yeah, you did it, all right. I'm going to finish him off for you. It becomes a team effort, and everybody got to do what they wanted to do, and it was more fun. Yeah. For for, there are people who want the other one, but I agree. I, I feel like they're gatekeepers. I feel like they're closing off the gate for those people who want to try. Yeah, so I want to go over a few ways that subtle gatekeeping is done for the deckers and to kind of help them navigate that whole thing. Um, one of the things that I love to say to people when it comes to a lot of things, and you've seen me do this in regular mm -hmm. life, which is, it's so obvious, it's so easy. And when and where was I supposed to learn? You know, because um, I've been gaming a long time, but most people don't understand how harrowing it was for me to learn how to game. I had to go to places that hated black people. You know, I had to catch the bus to Burbank to get gaming groups at a time where they had on the books um, ninjas had to show paperwork for being out in public after sunset. You know, I was a teenage boy catching the bus all the way up there wearing my rock and roll gear. So I was already dressed funny and the police were hostile. So in order to get a book, I had to take a day's adventure. Like I have turned my quests to buying role playing supplies into games. <laughs> you know, I've run them on the table and people were like, man, that was harsh. I'm like, yeah. you know, based on a true story. Um, and, you know, a lot before the Internet. Um, where you could get PDFs of stuff and um, people talked about the stuff on a global level, this information was very arcane. You know, I, I, I was talking about this last night with my mother, of all people, because she knew I was a dark kid, you know, but she didn't really notice when I started playing D&D, but I got my first red book of D&D from the library down the street from my house, but it was the only D and D book they had. <laughs> and I had to teach for, I had to read the book. <clears throat> I had to understand what I was reading and I didn't. And then I had to, I was like, there are more than six sided dice. Dice come in other shapes than cubes, you know? And, um, so I had to go through all that, sorry, in order to learn. And I see a lot of new, I see a lot of people talking to the new gamers like, well, the information's out there, so you should know before you come talk to me. And it's like, do they know what questions to ask? You know, or do they just absorb by osmosis your awesomeness of gaming? Well, and I also feel like that answer is not taking into consideration <laughs> one of my, one of my biggest complaints with a lot of the um, series as they get expansions mm -hmm. is <clears throat> the fact like, okay, I want to put a mod on my weapon. All right, where's a list of mods? Well, in this book on this page, there's a list of six mods. And in this ah. book on this page, there's five more. And in this book on this page, I don't own those two books. Oh, well, then you can't have those mods. Why? They're still out there. So <laughs> I need to, there's not one source. Like when they, when they release an expansion, they don't include the stuff from the first book. So you end up, and I get it. I get the marketing aspect. They want you to buy all the books. But in that, in that vein, there's no easy way other than buying the computer program that allows you to pull a drop-down menu and then look at all the mods that are possible. And that's today. Yeah. You know, back in the 90s, when, computer Ameri well, when America Online was the best that we had, we had to... <laughs> yeah, yeah um, we actually had to do quite a bit of things. Um, to get that information, but now the information is public. But when the information is out there, um, you have to ask yourself the question of what, que what am I looking up now? You know, I, 
I, like I said, I was talking about this with my mom last night because I brought up role playing and she brought it up in a therapeutic sense. And I'm like, you really don't know what I do for a living. Okay. So I pulled up the YouTubes and I pulled up a what is role playing video. And we're going to be producing one of those probably later on today because um, <laughs> it took a while to actually find one that would answer the question to my mom. And I think about my mom when I put together these things a lot because she didn't grow up role playing. She grew up in the inner city in the 1950s. And there's a whole bunch of stuff that she just don't know. She's an incredibly smart woman, but there's been so much information that has been withheld from her. Mm -hmm. She doesn't know what questions to ask, and there's a lot of regular life that's been closed off to her and still is. And at 65, you know, 65 and, and waning health, those heroic quests that the young go on, she just don't have it in her. So I'm like, all right, so how can I do this in a way that my mom would understand it, you know? And I showed her all that stuff and then i explained to her what satanic panic was back in the oh, back yeah. in the 80s oh, yeah, yeah. and how her mother thought i was possessed by a demon when she found my my werewolf the apocalypse book and um yeah yeah and i'm what like was, what no. was they, they tracked hmm? uh hmm? the this the, the, the little uh, comics that went out about how evil they were they oh were yeah yeah visit, yeah oh god something I've, tracked yeah, uh, I, I I know the books you're talking oh, about. Oh, man, I can't remember the name of them. But, yeah, they, and they're amazing. My favorite are the ones for Halloween and New Year's. You killed my wizard, so I must now kill you. Yes. Nobody, and, no. Yeah, no. no. <laughs> I mean, don't I mean, get me maybe wrong. Maybe it's out there. Maybe it's out there, but not, not the standard. Yeah, exactly. Don't judge the standard by a fringe case. A, but if you do, pick the good fringe case. <laughs> You know, hello, police officers. Every black person is like Barack Obama. Everyone, <laughs> you know, instead of, you know, Easy e So you know, they're looking they're looking for Easy e And I'm like, no, I'm more like Obama. You know, my kids are like Obama, you know. Uh, <laughs> um, but, yeah, I'm just saying if you're if you're going to pick a French case, pick the good French, you know, just pick the good French and we'll have a better world. But with the gatekeeping thing, um, a lot of people don't realize that that's what they're doing. So, again when you're feeling like you're being gatekept it's like okay hang on a minute where was i supposed to learn that thing that you say i should automatically know you know that's the whole thing it's you know it's i realize you're saying that i should know this because you know it it's obvious to you pause for half a moment and ask why should it be obvious to me the new guy <laughs> i'm the new guy I just got here. They don't teach D and D in college. It's not an election. It's not an elective. Should be. <laughs> but, yeah, interesting. Uh, I will. Major you know. in in RPGs. Yes, major in tabletop RPGs. You know specifically. Why limit? Um, because no, no, no. if you're doing um MMO RPGs or emphasis. In, in other words, yeah. you do. It's like. I have a degree in theater with an emphasis in musical theater and Shakespeare. Okay, all right. RPGs with an emphasis in tabletop. Well, I would say, excuse me, major in creative writing with an emphasis in tabletop RPGs. I, the only reason why I would think on that is is that the creative writing aspect, I guess storytelling to an extent, um, it seems very DM related, not just player related. Oh, really? Not that, it w not that it's not used, but having taken creative writing courses... Mm -hmm. They're a little bit more than you need to RP. You don't um, need it. I, I, I would agree with that. I'm just thinking like, you know, being the film guy, I studied Michael Mann. And Michael Mann has this thing with his actors where it's like, this is your character. Where did they grow up? What are their favorite shoes? What is the first time they went out with their brothers and sisters and what were they wearing and what kind of ice cream did they like? And they end up having to write a biography of a character that has 14 lines in a movie. <laughs> and I'm just kind of going, yes. Well, in that same sense, yeah. you can do that with uh, improv. Yeah. So improv, I, I would probably lean more on the improv side for just the player. I would the say that I agree. Story, the creative writing for more of the GM. I would say that I agree and that it's important to put it all in writing. Yeah, true, true. See what I did there? You, see, you guys, yeah, you improv people, you, 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 you would say that. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> so yeah, and... Um, but you know, with that, I would also say I'm trying to keep us. I'm trying to keep us on target. We, we wander so much. Um, but yeah, so 
that whole um now there's a second part mm -hmm. okay and that is the subtle pressure subtle pressure of internal expectations um i was talking to one of my players from one of the games and they listen to a lot of podcasts oh wait having a moment here yeah um they listen to a lot of podcasts i'm just making sure that um okay there we go Ooh, look at that and play error 2000 yes All right. This um, old-time radio program was originally aired live long before the advent of high fidelity. As a result, you may you may detect an occasional surface noise or volume drop, so common to old radios. Unfortunately. Okay, so we're gonna do a thing real quick, because we lost the transmission, but at the same time, um, yeah, we're having a little transmission problem because probably because of the storm. So I'm going to ah, I hadn't considered that. Stop streaming and restart. All right, we should be back. We should be back. Don't worry, a lot of this stuff is going to be handled in post and it looked like it had just come back. But that's okay. We're here. And soon you will never be here. Um yeah, there we go. We're back now. We're back. That's red pirate Roberts takes no oh, survivors. <laughs> um, he's here for your souls. Um, so what was I talking about? Oh yeah, the internal pressure, um, the subtle pressure of internal expectation. Okay, that is there we go. That is a real thing. But what is that? Well, like I was saying, I was talking to. Um, one of my players and one of the games that I have coming up and they listen to a lot of podcasts sometimes a lot of live play podcast and they are afraid of being that player who's ditzy and doesn't know the rules and I'm like okay well here's the thing isn't it the GM's job to know the rules I mean there should be a basic understanding of the rules and if a player has to ask questions, of course the GM and the other players have to answer. But I think that the player only has a slight responsibility to remember the answers to the questions. And I say slight, meaning if you're with a gaming group for three and a half years, playing the same game, you should know at a certain point what it takes to do a skill check. You know, yeah, that's true. only because you've been doing it with the group for three and a half years and if you're actually engaged in the game and not on your phone not taking naps you know but actually engaged you will pick up the bare basics yeah like in a d20 game how do you do a skill check you roll a 20 sided die <laughs> you know and you add the score you have in that skill and if you don't have that skill then you take a penalty that really good new players write that penalty on the sheet next to the skill that they don't have. So it's like, I rule this, and according to my sheet, I do a minus three, so minus three on the D20. Okay, that's it. But to know what the climbing what the climbing penalty is on an inclined plane that's more than 160 degrees when you don't have climbing gear and you have a climbing skill of one with the rogue trait and you're a dwarf instead of an elf. Well, in that vein, I also have noted uh, a lot of people, so many people are playing the games that have played them forever. And every once in a while, you have two people whose memories of the rule mm -hmm. do not coincide. <laughs> um, so you're kind of like, no, nah, I don't think that's how that runs. And you consult the books. But mm -hmm. it's never a bad thing. And that happens even to the most seasoned players. Yeah. So I don't understand why they would react so poorly to somebody who hasn't had their study when people who are seasoned get the rules wrong all the time. Um, well, it's not that I'm not talking about the veteran players getting mad at the newbies. Oh, okay. I'm talking about the newbies getting mad at themselves. Okay. Okay, and it's like... But you know, that same thing can offer them comfort and the mm -hmm. fact that this person who's been playing the game for 20 years still every once in a while has to go to the books. Yeah, and that that's... Now, I realize that every newbie does it. You know, um, I like for you guys, big confession time. This man right here has to talk me up about what we do 
all the time because I see a lot of the people that do this and I've known them for a long time and I'm like, their budgets are so much bigger than mine and I'm trying to do it and I'm doing it from scratch. I, I hate doing this from being poor. I'm never going to catch up. And he's like, <laughs> dude, so you weren't born, you weren't born rich. You don't have the careers that they have when they got started. So, yeah, they had more gear than you did when they got started. But look at how far you've come. And I'm like, I know what I should be, Arthur. Why, dude? <laughs> because I'm only a year younger than some of them, and I'm two years older than uh, Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, and then I have to stop for a moment. And he's like, dude. You were sounding like a new player that's being mad at themselves for not already knowing the knowing the GM's handbook. And I'm like, you know, I mean, am I wrong? Is is that no. not the conversations we have that in Hollywood? Absolutely <laughs> the conversations we have had like, multiple times. <laughs> Specifically yeah. right after Stream of Live. Oh yeah. Yeah. You know, seeing all that stuff. So I get it. Why don't we have a backdrop that's got <laughs> movable that <laughs> The whole company is supporting that that <laughs> podcast. We, we, we're not there yet. Yeah, exactly. But they were A lot of them weren't there when they first broadcast. Aha. Uh -huh. And if they did, if they were there, they usually were getting on with another group that already was supporting them. You've done this from scratch. Now let's not talk about me or back in the deck. What I'm saying is that principle, Understood. that principle yes. right there, applies perfectly to new players. You've never played an RPG, or more to the point, you've never played a tabletop RPG. So if you come in from video games where you're pressing two, pr uh, press one, press one, press one, press three, pr one, 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 three, one, 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 back up, heal, where's my tank? You know, that kind of thing. Um, the idea of talking to NPCs and then getting your pocket picked because the GM feels like being random, that's new. That's new to you. The idea of trying not to be a murder hobo <laughs> because your charisma ratings actually mean something, that's new. And shifting that gear is a skill that requires instruction or acquisition, instruction, and practice, you know? And, um, but a lot of, a lot of players are stuck really trying not to be stereotypes you know i yeah. don't i don't want to be the black dude that didn't read the book you know i don't want to be the ditzy girl who doesn't know the rules and keeps going what you know um they don't want to be these stereotypes but they get so wrapped up in that i'll, I'll put the other poser the the, uh, the other uh stereotype i don't want to be a poser who is viewed as not actually being a true gamer ah that whole concept of true gamer yeah and that'll take us back to the that that's going to take us back to the whole gatekeeping thing but um but i think you know what that ends up doing speaking of that gatekeeping is that keeps the new player from walking through like that builds the gate for the player while the other players are going no come in and they're like i'll be in in a minute i just got to build this barrier between you and me that that consists of my own insecurities and you know being an older gamer that's like no no put that down put that down no no walls you don't need a wall between you and you are welcome here you're welcome and i don't expect you to already know you know i don't know I think I know where that idea came from because I remember in school, my teachers, I had a few bad teachers and they would always ask me, what do you mean you don't know? <laughs> did, did you have that? I did, but I, I really adhered more to the uh, teachers that are like, there are no dumb questions. Okay. Ask your questions. because And one of the things that was put forward in a lot of them, especially in my math classes, is if you asked your question, there are at least two more people in this classroom who were thinking the same thing and didn't have the guts to ask. So be the one who had the guts to ask. Boom. <laughs> you know. No. I bet when you were talking about that one guy who was asking you all the questions and you asked who, who here is a teacher. <laughs> I bet if you had asked that group how many people were wondering the same thing, you might have seen a couple hands. Um, so every question that he had, he may not be the only person with that question. On that one, no. Because of the eight people at the table, there were only two new gamers. And everyone else... If they weren't veterans of Pathfinder, they were veterans of the White Wolf properties. So, 
and the but questions there's that... still one other new gamer who might have been thinking that same question mm -hmm. and you'd be surprised even somebody who's a white wolf person not knowing pathfinder might have the same question of, that's how does this work in that world that's true because it is different and you know game system to game system is different like if you only knew uh white wolf if you only knew old wad ah. 1.0 if you only knew wad 1.0 your statement would be dice come in something other than 10 sided <laughs> Well, I wouldn't go that far because everyone, no matter where you come from, has seen craps and Monopoly because all of the all of the target games come. I, know, with I, D6s. I think there's some people who specifically go out of their way to avoid Monopoly. <laughs> they know there's yeah. a boot and a boat and like you know a top hat that they even in a kindergarten game backgammon has six sided dice. Like backgammon you can't... is not a kindergarten game. That no, is a complicated game. Yeah, um, yeah, but for some reason it's in every kindergarten. I don't know is why. It really? Yeah. I, been in I think it's because I, I think been it's, in my kindergarten. That's it. I think it was because I think it's literally because of the little checker-looking things. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So, um, but yeah, but everybody, everybody in the in Western civilization knows the six-sided die. Everybody does. I'm just kidding. But yeah, 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 I get what you're saying. That's all. But yeah, so, um, but when it comes to that, it's you know these are the subtle ways that people who don't mean to be gatekeepers. Mm -hmm keep the gates and how other people that don't mean to be gatekeepers build their own to keep themselves out and this is one of the reasons that session zero is so important session zero is the session where nobody's playing but you're um building characters you're going over rules you're asking all the questions in the world just all the questions and that is specifically what that thing is what that is set up for um, and with the advent of this Webernet thing, session zero can happen in a time, <laughs> in a time. You can be like, hey, what you doing? Or you up, dice emoji, <laughs> dice emoji zero. Oh, slip you need a session zero? Slip that background into my DMs. <laughs> huh? I said, slip that background into my DMs. It, exactly, exactly. Matter of fact, I think, I think we should start using that, Deckers, you know, for session zero. You up, dice emoji with the with the number zero so no yeah no more coot no more eggplants it's you up dice emoji who wants a session zero? Oh yeah <laughs> you know oh and, yep and that's a call. That's yep a call. so He's with up. that um we're gonna lose him for just a moment because daddy calls <laughs> yep there we go <laughs> so yeah um so I want to know what a lot of you guys think in regards to that. Are we, okay, good. We're still we're still going, still going. Um, so yeah, I know today we seem a little wandery, 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 but it's new dad and exhausted wizard. Um, but <clears throat> you know, I um I, I think about a lot of this stuff um quite often um when it comes to the new players. Okay, I am all about new players. And if you guys are experienced players out there, this is what I want you guys to consider. Okay, I want you to consider how you would teach your granddad or your grandma, whichever one is still living, how would you teach them how to role play with you? You know, if they were sitting at the table, would they feel like part of the gang or would they feel like they're being made fun of? And that is the number one, the number one A1 question to really ask when it comes to how you're doing experiences at the table. Um, if you don't have your grandparents, and think about your kids, you know, because learning how to role play is really easy. Everybody can play pretend, everybody can. The difficulty comes from, um, well, the real difficulty in role playing comes from learning the system. Okay, learning the system, which consists of lore and mechanics. Okay, um, I, I tend to run like one of the games that you guys know I run, which is a nominee, which is happening this Sunday. And the lore of a nominee is pretty simple if you're an occultist or if you have seen movies like Prophecy and things like that. The lore is not very complicated. The gaming system sounds complicated because as it's written in the book, it's very difficult to understand, you know, but when you realize that it is a game that's two six-sided dice and a third six-sided die to see how well things happened, um, 
you're rolling two six-sided dice and your target number is below your 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 skill stat and whatever attribute that skill is attached to so if you want to climb a tree you would roll your athletics and your dexterity so if you had an athletics of three and a dexterity of six then you have to roll below nine that's it nine or lower on those dice that that's what you got to do that that's the whole thing you roll nine or lower and you succeed that that that's the whole thing i mean it, it's it's simple once you know but getting to that point where it is simple that's a difficult thing and i could do that for d20 or white wolf or shadow run or paranoia you know a lot of games but anytime someone is sitting at the table with me for the first time the big key to making them feel welcome is to make sure that they as new people well <clears throat> the the key to making them feel welcomed is for me to remember that they don't know what i know and to not be egocentric about it i'm there because i want to give them what i know if i'm really good i can teach one or two players enough to be gms <laughs> and if i make a good gm that means i might one day be able to play in a game without having to run it and that that's what i'm gonna do that is some good stuff but um that is a thing now one of the things that i figure i should um one of the things that i figure i should do now that i got a little bit of time is um huh yeah i'm here so let's call that there at the mm -hmm, good um so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna welcome our new guest to the show and um you know he's sitting up there and i want to say um jello there we go let's just widen out this shot a tiny bit tiny bit wider there we go boom <laughs> boom what if you're bringing him on i'm putting him to work i'm, 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 I'm southern figuring he is i'm figuring he is you know I'm, I'm i'm southern so he's working double rate though hmm he's working double rate oh okay well i could say something but i don't <laughs> want to get knifed by your wife um there we are all right so yeah i'm gonna welcome our new guest um deckers in peace city say what's going on to theo or to theodore mccann hey there's the boy out yep he's sitting up there Hi. there he is yep and he is he's here eating and again um one of the new gamers that we're talking about um so yeah as i was as i was saying to the people while you were tending to the boy mm -hmm. um you know it's it's the new player's job, not just the GM, but the, but the new people at the table to ask themselves the question, if I was teaching this to my parents or to my grandparents, how would I teach it to them and would I be treating them like this? Fair enough. That's you know? a good question. Um, now, truth, okay, some people would be like, yeah, no, I would totally treat my dad like that. I don't like that guy. But you know what I'm Pick talking about. Pick somebody you like. Yeah, <laughs> it's definitely part of the caveat is, is yeah. do you like the person that we're talking about? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. By the way, he is huge. He is just, <laughs> yeah. he is huge. Yes, he is. He's got that head. Big old head. He, that, that kid's got a lot on his mind. I mean, look <laughs> at this guy. <laughs> yeah, he's totally. not a small boy. Yep, and he's waving. So, so yeah. Um, oh, that's the thing. Um, I'm really trying not to think like a TV executive right now. <laughs> so, <laughs> but, yeah. So, I mean, that those are sort of the things. Now, when it comes to those things, again... The golden rules of RPG is one, you can't lose. There's no way to lose an RPG. Yeah, even if you, because I guess, well, I've always looked at it from a standpoint of, at the end of this, I want to have a story. Mm -hmm. And if my guy dies, I still have a story. Usually a pretty darn epic one of how my guy died. And so it, it always ends for me in what I was hoping for. Well, yeah, that's because you're a bard. <laughs> um, I don't mean the characters that he plays. He is a bard, as I am a wizard. So everything is a story and everything a song. Everything is a story. <laughs> you know, 
like when danger turned it reared its ugly head <laughs> you know so robin turned his tail and fled and then he fed his son upon the cameras that he sits um and again um like i said we're we're you know golden rule number one you cannot lose you can't lose an rpg number two the only way that you can do it wrong is to be so afraid of doing it that you don't get around to doing it. So doing it yeah. wrong generally means not doing it at all. <laughs> well, so. and, and to a certain extent, if you've got a goal in mind of what you want to do, you've got to try something to work towards that. Mm -hmm. Try something, and then if it doesn't work, then it doesn't work, and you'll try something else the next time. Mm -hmm. But, you know, give it a shot. Yeah, especially with all the roles and stuff like that. There are many characters where I'm like, okay, this character is going to be this way. This character is going to do this kind of thing. And then I roll and, oh, no, my numbers aren't good enough to do that. <laughs> okay, so what would this character do? Because he's not so good at picking <laughs> locks yet. He's going to try and pull the door off its hinges. Yeah. Oh, look, my strength is good enough for that. You know, you got to keep trying and, and come up with different ways. Yeah, now what I do notice is that that is a good thing to say because one of the things I notice a lot is a lot of players have an idea of what their characters should be able to do although they're just learning so it's like um i want to make a jedi that can do blah 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 and it's like dude you can have a jedi that's still in the academy because that's the level of play we're at well what about force blast you might be able to learn it eventually well i should totally be able to should you you know it's always an interesting thing when somebody comes up with a character concept that uh, I, I recognize we're all starting out at level zero but my character is actually a reincarnation of this dragon that used to live. And it's like, okay, no. No, you're going to be a level zero like everybody else. I just hand them a copy of Terry Pratchett's Small Gods. <laughs> you're a god, but you're a turtle. This big. <laughs> so, yeah, you can totally... And you can only be heard by true believers in you. Well, I go to the temple. Okay. <laughs> Nobody can hear me, but they should be. I said true believers in yeah. you, yeah, they not in the religion. Not just generally. <laughs> you know, they have to have real faith, you know, but that that's a totally different thing. Um, but with that, um, I do have to say that the Boyo is a fantastic alarm system because that's pretty much our time for the day. Yeah, it is. So He knew it. He knew yeah, it. he's like, all right, okay, Dad, it's time hey, to go. I've, I've, I've slept long enough. I'm ready to have my bottle. Yeah, get my bottle, and then, yeah, we got to do the thing. Again, I can't get over. He is enormous. <laughs> Mike's yeah, here. He's, he's this not baby even is like two feet long. Wearing, he's not <laughs> even six months, and he's already wearing uh, nine-month clothes. Yeah, yeah. Which, and he's more than two feet long. Oh, my God. So, <laughs> so you know what that means. You got to start getting wily. Because when he's 13 or 14, he's going to be like, I'm tired of you, old man. And it's like, boy, I don't want to have. Hey, how's it going? There he is. He's, he's, yeah, he's looking at me. Yeah. And he's already reaching yep, for the there mic. There you go. There's a great picture of you. You want to see a great picture of my son at a microphone on my Instagram. <laughs> okay. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. He's yelling at a microphone with me. How's it going, Theo? Door. Theo Door. Theo's yeah, fine. Yeah. Theo's yeah, fine. Oh, he likes all of it. Theo, Ted, Teddy. I Little will call team. you Theodore until you tell me what else to, to tell you. Don't worry, I actually do speak baby. Yeah, I do. Matter of fact, yeah, that's the thing. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so um, with that, though, uh, do you have anything to say to the audience um, while I get everything for it? Uh, just thank you very much for tuning in. Uh, feel free to, to check us out. You've already gotten all his information on uh, the Instagrams, the Twitters, the, all of those. And you can also follow me on bardic underscore DW. Uh, on Twitter or uh, dw.bidp on Instagram or uh, pretty much those those are the two best ways to, to reach out to me. So if you guys are uh, you wanted to chat about anything we've talked about or want to make suggestions for topics we can talk about later or if you have suggestions for uh, actually I'll put this out there. If anybody wants to share with me the story of the first time they helped their child game. A friend of mine has just started with his uh, his adopted son gaming, and uh, it's interesting watching an old time gamer try and coach his son through that. So uh, I, I'm curious for more stories. If you have more stories, feel free to share them with me. Well, that's good. And of course, we've got um, the star of a different show that's coming up soon. 
Yeah, say hi to the guy. All right, there we go. Yeah, let me guess. You found out that there was a baby here and you had to come out of your cage. Get back in your cage. Okay, <laughs> but yeah, it's one of those things. So, um, thank you for showing up. Thank Absolutely. you for, you know, bringing the special guest star who can take over the show because that's what they do. Um, Next generation of gamers. Yep, yep, yep. And again, we're here for them mm-hmm. and for you. So, thank you for showing up. <laughs> um, and I'm going to say, hey, you, you need to get out of here. I need to pull up everything. All right, fine. <laughs> So, um, so with that, I'm going to say, you know, yeah, share those experiences and, um, and let us know what you guys think about the stuff that we were talking about today. And if you guys really want to do that, then cool. Then I would like you to get a hold of us at, of course, back in the deck at gmail.com. That's B A C K I N T H E D E C K at gmail.com. Um, check us out on YouTube, you know. Oh, wait. Uh, look at the baby. Okay, cool. Um, <clears throat> and um, seriously, hit us up on Twitter because I'm still, I still need to know from you guys if I should do the SoundCloud investment so that you guys can download the stuff for free and give it to people in, in the form of sound and all that stuff. And uh, what are you looking at? Oh, yeah. He's so fascinated. It's like, Daddy, his skin is so much darker. And, um, you know, join us on Deckers on the Book and let us know what you think. Check out the stuff that we're, um, check out all the stuff that we're building. Um, check out babies with dice in their hands and, um, you know, various puppet things and stuff around game tables. We put those things up on Deckers on the Book and on our Instagram. So you can check us out at Back in the Deck. That is at B A C K I N T H E D E C. UK. And of course, um, if you guys, yeah, look at that. Oh, look at the baby. I love not having to turn to myself sometimes. Um, and again, if you guys like what we do and you want to support our stuff, then please, please, please hit us up on our Patreon at patreon.com slash bid underscore p uh this is just a basic thing but yeah it's got loads and loads and loads and loads of content um putting up stuff from this week as well i kind of fell behind on it due to a little bit of sickness but we're getting all that stuff done and um if you really really want to like just do a one-time thing like a one-time donation or something then feel free to hit us up on our um gofundme um that's at gofundme.com slash bid dash p not underscore so since i have a chance for a cute shot oh look at all that he's like what are you doing uh, yeah stop looking over here and um with that i'm gonna say what i say in every show which is if anybody tells you that you can't have the hobbies you like or the things that you're into because of the circumstances of your birth be it race religion creed gender identity sexual preference your disability or your budget you just tell them that we said to take any of those cards and put them back in the deck this is solar gray the cinematic sorcerer along with the bard in the deck and the new boyo hello anything, bard anything have to anything you gotta say bard level zero anything to add all right, well said. And he's a man, a few words. Yes. Well, no, he's a baby. He's not a man. He gets a child. He's a child. He gets a childhood. It was he goes a youth spell. <laughs> okay, that's fair. All right, and with that, I'm gonna say thank you guys, and we'll see you next time on Table Talk.